Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adora. If this is your first time here, please make sure that you subscribe. So today's video is about, it's an article I've written, I wrote sometime in January, but then I'll like to make like a whole video out of it so that I could explain some things a bit further but it's about going from a newbie to an experienced developer in four phases and I like to call these phases the crawling phase the walking phase the running phase and the flying phase so let's get right into the video I mean as a crawler you would have made up your mind maybe depending on maybe a movie that you watched that made you want to come into programming or I mean, you're doing it in school or you saw your friend who's a developer and you, you've heard so much about coding and then you just really like it and then you decided that, okay, this is the path. But whatever reason, whatever it is that made you want to try to be on this path, as a crawler, you've decided that you want to be on this path. Now, in my opinion, what's the first thing that you do? The first thing that you do is not going to... It's like some random people's DM and start asking questions because I'm going to say, yes, you should ask questions. It's great to ask questions, but you should do your own personal research so that it would make you know some things and would inform the kind of questions that you ask people so that, okay, I've done research about this whole programming thing. And I know that there are web developers, there are front end developers, there are back end developers, there are mobile developers, there are full stack developers, there are people that do stuff for, AI and machine learning, there are people that do stuff in the XR space, there are people that do stuff in so many other areas, there are data scientists, there are whatever. So this is the path that I think I want to go um, because I've read this and, I, and it's, I mean, you have access to internet. Google is your friend. Like, it's just, I think it's best to like research on these things, know the kinds of fields that exist, you know, within programming, and then you can start from there. It's important to research. Another thing that's important to do is create like some kind of plan, you know? It would be nice to create this plan and like sort of time box that plan. So, okay, I know that I want to have created my portfolio by June next year. I want to apply for internships by May next year. I want to have joined a community by September this year. I want to have built as many apps as I can by XYZ this year. And then, you know, setting these, you know, goals would help you in how you move forward from there because, you know, your goals could change and that's fine. But at least you have something that, you know, you can look back to and be like, okay, this is where I started from. This is what I said I wanted to do. And this is how, you know, I said I'm going to do it. As a crawler, the two things that you do are, number one, you know, you do some research. You know, research being, you know, going on the internet to, like, learn about the field. Now, it's not learning, like, coding and stuff. It's learning about so that you can choose what path, you know, going about asking people that, you know, have it all sorted out and doing some personal research on your own. And then the second thing you should do is based upon that research, you know, create like a plan that you want to follow. And if you've had these two things, then I feel like you're ready to walk. Now, for me, a, a walker, not Johnny Walker, but... What did you say? Not Johnny Walker, but... Right joke. I think I should cut this part out. <laughs> a worker is somebody that um, has already decided that they're going to code, has done some research, has an idea of at least when you say web developer, they know what that means. When you say this, because when you say mobile developer, they know what that means because they have, you know, done research, they understand these things. They also have some plan. And at that stage, when you're working, what's important in this stage is learning. That's it. Learning. Learning every day. And the truth is, you learn by coding. So that means you have started writing some code. But before you jump into, like, you know, code that can scare you, I would say the first thing you should do is take an introduction to computer science course. You need to take all these courses. I've seen people that jump into React before learning JavaScript. And then you come back. Because if you're going to build a house on some type of 
you're gonna need to like lay the foundation of the house before you build this because if you don't lay a proper foundation your house can sink like it's important that you learn the fundamentals first and there are two resources that i know that i've heard people say are really amazing that you can like you know try and I've, I've recommended them to some people and they've tried them and I've had really good feedback. I think you should try the Harvard CS50 course. You know, it's an introductory course into computer science and it's an amazing course. If you can take it, I think you should take it. Another course that I would suggest you try is the Udacity Introduction to Computer Science course. So if you take any of these courses, after taking, I'm saying take these courses because, you know, it teaches you about computer science. It teaches you about how computers work. You know, it teaches you basic things, you know, like algorithms, primitive data types, data structures, things that are like on a foundational level you will need at every single point. So now when you've learned these things, you cannot be like, okay, I understand these concepts of computer science and that's great. I want to go into my web dev course. And then you can now say, okay, since I've learned about computer science, I want to learn web dev. The next thing you should do is that fundamental for the thing that you want to learn. Now you've learned about computers, which is great. The next thing you should do is the fundamentals for the thing that you want to learn. So if you want to learn web development, you know, nowadays it's like everyone is doing React TypeScript, um, React TypeScript, GraphQL, um, Node, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to jump into ah, you as you jump in, we jump out. So like, my, <laughs> so like my advice for you is to learn the basic things first. You know, learn HTML, learn CSS, learn JavaScript. If you are now going into maybe the mobile space, you know, learn the language first. Like if you're going to learn how to maybe build Android apps, for example, learn how to write Kotlin first, like just writing the Kotlin. Just learn that one first before you decide that, okay, I'm going to be writing Kotlin and I'm going to be building for Android. That way you learn the fundamentals of the language. It's going to help you, you know, like make your knowledge make sense. Because at the end of the day, all these things are like building blocks like if you learn the right technologies at the right time and you don't just jump to doing things you will not be able to take these blocks meaning the html the css the javascript and all those things that you learn to create things that are amazing and that's how you would grow and you can be building on top of this knowledge and that's how you know you grow and you get better so that's what i would advise as someone that is working you learn and as you're learning, you look back at the goals that you set previously and you follow those goals. At this point, you know, you should be thinking about, you know, working on your soft skills like, you know, communication, reaching out to people that you know are in this field so that maybe they can now start helping you and stuff like that. You could, they could be friends, they could be mentors, but like people that you know can, you know, add value to you, add value to your career. You can now like meet them in this phase as well when you walk another thing that you should learn you know in the walking phase is like version control as well it's very important because whatever field you end up in you're going to be writing code and you're going to check in that code to source control and you need to know how git works is very important if you've been able to do this successfully then you are probably getting ready to get to the third phase with. now at the running phase the running phase is where you are ready to at least you've done like a few learning projects you know you might have reached out to some family members and built some um, products for somebody basic stuff or my, even like some random products maybe ideas you see online you build you put it on your github and then you you've built like a portfolio over time you share things that you've learned you have friends and you have mentors and maybe you ask for advice once in a while that help you out and stuff like that not only technically but also like give you career advice since you're coming into tech right so when you are running you're ready to look for a job so it could be a full-time job it could be an internship Sometimes it's easy to get internships and that's a great way to start. So maybe you get an internship and then once the internship is done, you start looking for full-time roles. Or sometimes even in that organization, you can apply for a full-time role and then depending on maybe how good you are or whatever, you could get in and get like a job. So that's another thing that you think about. Or if you feel like you're good enough, you know, you go straight into applying. And I... I have a video on, you know, applying for like tech jobs and I'm going to put that link somewhere in this video so that you can take a look and watch that as well. In case you're thinking about maybe how would I, as someone that is trying to get my first job, go around, you know, getting that. You should, you know, 
apply to many jobs always show the skills that you have and don't be oh nobody wants to employ an aspiring software developer <laughs> nobody wants to employ an, an aspiring web developer except as an intern or if you get someone that would employ you it's probably because maybe they see potential and they believe in you or someone that will just employ you and use you <laughs> so like it's important to showcase your skills i am looking for a web developer job i have built pwas in the past using vue.js and this i'm looking for a junior role like how you present yourself is also something that matters and that's where some people miss it that's why you just miss it like when you are running you're ready to apply for these jobs once you are trying to apply for these jobs things that you can be thinking about as well is making some little you know open source contributions you know sharing what you learn reading as well another way that I've, I've i've learned is a good way to learn to write code is by reading code so sometimes you know just go to if you're already working you know and there's some pull requests open go and read the pull requests and the person that the author of the pull request ask them oh, um please excuse me what were you trying to do here and they could explain to you and you're like oh so this is what you're trying to do here and that helps you actually learn new ways to do stuff it helps you learn new ways to write code and that's how another way that you can get better also open source contributions um they're like a way for you to like you know <laughs> grow from like yeah but like i'm not going to i'm not saying that you should now go to react and or vs code and say that you want to submit pull requests because it might bounce your pr i'm sorry <laughs> but like you know starting small making small submitting small issues you know like submitting small prs starting small and then from there you know maybe understanding how the code base works and that goes a long way another thing that i wanted to say was when you are in your walking slash running phase it could be in either of the two if there's some form of hackathon that maybe is going on or something you might decide to go and do that because putting that in your resume would show an employer that you know at least you've worked in a team before and you are somebody that that can collaborate and that's one thing that some people look out for like is this person a good team player can this person actually if i bring them to my team can they you know work can they collaborate can they do things right then as you learn on the job as well document what you learn i think that's very important it might just be for you as a place as a hub where you just go back to see all the things that you're learning and it also just helps you see your growth and like see how far you've come and then i feel like if you've been able to do all these things like apply for jobs and hopefully get them you know once in a while do some oss contributions you know um read code write code um at that point when you like you are now fully in the job you are running <laughs> i don't say i run up <laughs> but like you're running and i feel like the next phase is the flying phase and once you're flying you are like some form of superhero you're like a superhero dev you know you know what you're doing even if sometimes you don't know what you're doing because that's the life that we chose but like you know you started writing code you are now in you're now fully into like the whole software development career and at this point your goals would have changed you know because initially what you wanted to do was go from a newbie to a software developer and now you are a software developer and now one thing you might not be thinking about is oh okay um i'm thinking about you know my career and i'm thinking about moving into like i'm tired of writing code and i want to be some and i want to be a pm or i want to move into like um, drift into like some other parts of management or change like my career line still in tech but i want to do something else or you might be like um i'm tired of working there are so many problems in my environment and I want to go and build a startup that solves all of these problems. Or I still want to be a software developer and grow in that whole individual contributor career path. Depending on what you want to do, at some point in your career, maybe a few years down the line, when you've been able to you know, go from that newbie to that engineer to that developer, at some point when you are growing in your career, this will not be some kind of decision that you might have to make and then you might go back to you know those people that you were talking to 
maybe you, you might have made new mentors, you might have made new friends, you know, that you can talk to, or you might or you might want to make that decision by yourself or with your family or whatever, but that's a decision that you will now have to make at some point. And the truth is, honestly, all these things that I've said from crawling to walking to running to flying, when you look at people that you love, right? When you look at developers that you look up to, at some point they all started from somewhere. They all probably crawled first. They all started from there. And the truth is, the people that are doing it are not doing it because they have two heads. You have the power to do it too. You've just not realized it yet. And I believe that with time, or hopefully with this video, or maybe you have, but you're looking for how to, I don't know. But I hope you realize it and then I hope you, you know, take that step or crawl first. Crawls are not steps, right? No. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> but I'm hoping that, you know, you move and then go to do what you have to do and then do it well thank you for watching this video till the end if you liked it make sure that you give it a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to me please make sure that you subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye yeah.